Throughout the world, people tried various devices, from a plain handkerchief through which you breathed in both air and dust, to elaborate masks through which you could hardly breathe at all. All kinds of materials were used. Gauzes, which kept out the big dust but let in the fine harmful particles, woolen fabrics which warmed the face but didn't clean the air, and wet sponges which didn't even warm the face. It seemed as though we'd never be able to clean the air we breathe. But at this time in the United States Bureau of Mines, official mine inspection and safety agency of our government, there were two young engineers, John Ryan and George Dyke. Out of their tragic experiences with disaster and death, they were approaching a vital decision. Many times they had heard that whistle. They'd heard that whistle and they knew what it meant. The clanging ambulance, the grim rescue squad, the anxious faces of families who could only wait and hope. They saw the rescue squad go down, down into the mine filled with suffocating gas. Gas that sometimes penetrated their unreliable breathing equipment. Then the rescue squad came back. Some had to be carried back. Silently, the two government engineers watched all hope fade from the eyes of the waiting women and children. Then and there, these men resolved to dedicate their lives to the cause of better safety for workers. On that resolution was founded the Mine Safety Appliances Company. Their first achievement was this famous oxygen breathing apparatus. Now used by mine rescue teams, firemen and other emergency workers everywhere. The knowledge they gained helped them in creating various other types of safety equipment. Then one day they turned to the age-old problem of how to make...